Good evening to everyone. We are the group one to discuss about the introduction to renewable systems presented by the Fantastic Four. Starting with Ms. Mary Alexis Mangabat, Mr. Jainer James Dingling, Ms. Marian Cariaga, and yours truly, Joseph Antonio. Here's the flow of our presentation from why renewable energy, consequences of fossil fuel and renewable energy sources, fossil fuels and nuclear energy focusing on coal and oil, and to the last one, we'll discuss the natural gas, nuclear energy, and electricity. Most of the energy that we use today is non-renewable. However, the concern about using these forms of energy is rising and people are now looking for more sustainable energy sources. Renewable energy is energy generated from the natural resources, such as the sunlight, wind, rain, tides, and geothermal heat. As stated by Shalkas, renewable energy is energy that is generated from natural processes that are continuously replenished. This includes sunlight, geothermal heat, wind, tides, water, and various forms of biomass. This energy is never depleted and is constantly replenished. The traditional energy sources such as coal and oil are finite and release carbon in the form of carbon dioxide and methane when burned. Two greenhouse gases that contribute significantly to global climate change acceleration. Renewable energy, on the other hand, either does not emit carbon or is carbon neutral, absorbing as much as it emits. Switching over to renewable sources of energy can reduce the use of Earth's limited resources, like fossil fuels. Tapping into sources of renewable energy is a relatively new development in the history of human energy production. Early human ancestors used wood to generate heat energy, then switched to coal, a fuel with higher energy density. That is why industries, countries, and individuals around the world are now turning to renewable energy sources, which either do not produce carbon to generate energy or are carbon neutral, to minimize humanity's contribution to climate change and help make sure our planet has energy for the future. The world community currently depends heavily on fossil fuels that are non-renewable and unfriendly to our environment. Here, shown in the presentation is a table that presents the breakdown of the total world delivered energy consumption based on end use sector and the fuel type in 2017 from the US Energy Information Administration or EIA. Note that all the values shown are in quad BTU or quadrillion British thermal unit. As shown in the table, more than half of the global energy is used by the industrial sector, which has a total of 239.4 quad BTU, followed by the transportation sector with 112.4 quad BTU, followed by the residential sector and the commercial sector. Here's a graph for the percentages energy used by the end use sector. Energy use is expected to increase worldwide driven mainly by industry, but this will mostly take place in developing countries with strong economic growth. Why make the industrial sector uses the biggest energy? It is because it is composed of three types, the energy intensive manufacturing, such as the food, the pulp and paper and so on, the non energy intensive manufacturing, the pharmaceuticals or the industrials, and the non-manufacturing. The mix and intensity of fuels consumed in this sector vary across regions and countries, depending on the level and mix of economic activity and on technological development. Another thing is that energy is used in the industrial sector for a wide range of purposes, such as process and assembly, steam and cloud generation, process, heating, and cooling, and lighting, heating, and air conditioning for buildings. 
This table shows the total global energy supply was 589 quad TPU, in which the fossil fuels were accounted for 82.7% of this total energy production. Renewable energy, including the hydroelectric power, which is environment-friendly and can be harvested indefinitely, was responsible for 12.7% of the total energy supply globally. Nuclear power supplied the remaining 4.6% of the total energy supply. And this shows the percentages of total world primary energy supply by fuel in 2017. And this slide shows the timeline for the energy use from the different sources. In 2000, only 9% of electricity came from renewables. And U.S. Energy Information Administration projections indicate that the renewables will constitute 18% of electricity generation by 2040. And that coal and nuclear-based electricity generations are expected to decrease in the coming years. But natural gas electricity generation is expected to increase due to the additional shale gas research. In 2015, the total electricity generation in the world was 24,255 terawatt hour or 24.255 times 10 raised to 12 kilowatt hour since 1 terawatt hour is equal to 1 billion kilowatt hour. Fossil fuels accounted for 66.3% of total electricity generation in the world, with 39.3% for coal, 22.9% for natural gas, and 4.1% for oil. While the renewable energy, including hydroelectric power and nuclear power, were responsible for 23.1% and 10.6% of global electricity generation, respectively. A total of 5,603 terawatt hour of renewable electricity was generated for that year. We can observe that the prediction from EIA had been exceeded in terms of the renewable energy use from 18% to 23.1% of electricity generation. And this shows the percentages of global electricity generation in 2015. The renewable energy, which includes the hydroelectric power. In 2016, the total installed capacity of electricity in the United States was 1,074 gigawatts, and the U.S. power plants generated 4,077 terawatt hour of electricity. Approximately 83.9% of electricity was generated by coal, natural gas, and nuclear power plants. The remaining 16.1% was generated mostly by renewable sources, including hydro and wind. And this shows the detailed percentages of electricity generation by fuel type and source in the U.S. And the remaining generation was due to biomass, solar, and geothermal. This shows the renewable electricity, electricity generation by source in the U.S. We can conclude that Renewables are currently the fastest growing energy source in the world. Depletion and emission concerns over fossil fuel use and increasing government incentives can cause even higher growth in the use of renewables in the coming decades. Based on this figure, the fastest growing renewable sources are solar and wind by the end of 2017. Hydroelectric, geothermal, and wind power generation technologies are able to compete with fossil fuel-based electricity generation economically. But solar electricity generation is still expensive. And to summarize, here is the projections from the U.S. Energy Information Administration in the future that in 2050, the solar electricity will take the greatest share in electricity generation given the steady decreases in solar electricity costs combined with the increased government incentives that would be likely to help wider use of solar electricity in the coming years. In this table, the total energy consumption by different energy sources is given to be 589 quad BTU, while the total energy use by all end use sectors is 438.8 quad BTU, which are both enclosed in red box. And in the violet boxes are the total amount of energy lost during the production of electricity by all energy sources.
The first task is to explain the difference between these two values. The energy lost is equal by subtracting total energy consumption, which is the 589, to the total energy used by all end use sector, which is 438.8. It is also the same with calculating the energy lost through the difference between the total energy value of fuel consumption, which is 223.6, and the actual amount of electricity consumed, which is the 74.5. And we can see that the energy loss between these values are very close to each other. The next task is calculating the overall thermal efficiency of electricity production by all energy sources. The thermal efficiency of a power plant is defined as the power produced divided by the energy consumed. And substituting the values, you can come up with the answer of 0 0.333 or 33.3%. We can conclude that about 67% of energy is lost during the conversion of energy sources into electricity. Sample number two is all about the ton of oil equivalent or tow unit. Ton of oil equivalent is an amount of energy unit commonly used to express large amounts of energy. It represents the amount of energy released by burning 1 ton or 1,000 kilogram of crude oil. Remember that 1 tow is equal to 41.868 gigajoules. According to the data in the table, 74.5 quad BTU of electricity is produced. Number 1. The power plants in the United States generated 4.05 times 10 raised to 9 megawatt hour of electricity in a year. Express this value in the tow unit. This problem can be answered through the conversion. Given the conversion of units found in the left part of the slide, we can now answer the problem. From the electricity generation in the U.S., time times the conversion of units, we can come up with the answer of 3.48 times 10 raised to 8 tau. And with the electricity generation of the world, which is the 74.5 quad BTU times the conversion unit to get the tau unit, we can come up with the answer of 1.88 times 10 raised to 9 tau. For the next problem, determine the percentage of global electricity generation that occurred in the United States. The percentage of global electricity generation that occurred in the U.S. is determined to be the electricity generation in the U.S. over the electricity generation in the world. And substituting the values that we have solved earlier, we can come up with the answer of 0 0.185 or 18.5%. And we can conclude that the U.S. electricity generation represents 18.5% of global generation. And that's all for my presentation. Thank you. I will now give the spotlight to Mr. Jr. James Ding Ding to discuss more about renewable energy sources. Thank you, Joseph. For the next part. We are going to discuss about the consequences of fossil fuel combustion and renewable energy resources. But first, let us define what fossil fuel is. According to the official website of National Geographic, fossil fuels are made from decomposing plants and animals. These fuels are found in the Earth's crust and contain carbon and hydrogen, which can be burned for energy, coal, oil, and natural gas are examples of fossil fuels. Therapas 2022 describes fossil fuel combustion as a process of burning fossil fuels to create energy. But an increase in fossil fuel combustion raises the environmental concerns in terms of pollution and climate change. This is according to Pasternak 2021. According to the official website of the International Trade Administration, Philippines energy market current energy mix is composed of Coal, 47% Did you know that Semirara Mining Corporation is the largest coal producer in the Philippines? It covers an area of 55 square kilometers and is located 
350 kilometers south of Manila. Natural gas, 22%. Did you know that year 2017, a bus was ripped apart and at least 26 people killed when it took the full force of gas truck explosion on a highway in the southern Philippines? The delivery truck, which was carrying LPG, overturned and after its brakes failed, the resulting explosion engulfed the passing bus. Renewable energy, 24%. Did you know that Energy Development Corporation is the Philippines' largest 100% renewable energy company? According to the Department of Energy's 2019 power statistics, EDC generated 9,300.10 gigawatt hour or over 42% of the country's total generated power from renew renewable energy during that year. Oil based 6.2%. Did you know that, according to the Oil and Gas Journal, the Philippines had 139 million barrels of crude oil, including these condensate reserves, in 2019? In 2019, total petroleum and other liquids production was 37,000 barrels per day. It should be noted that from the presented statistics, approximately 75% came from non-renewable energy, and this is an extremely large portion of the total energy. As this fossil fuel powers the industrial development of modern life, undesirable side effects is inevitable. There are pollutants emitted responsible for smog, acid rain, air pollution, and other effects on environment. Environmental pollution that has become a serious threat to vegetation, wildlife, and human health. Now, let's break down further these emissions produced by combustion of fossil fuels. First, carbon dioxide. It is the primary greenhouse gas that contributes to global warming. In 2020, carbon dioxide emissions for Philippines was 139.2 million tons. This is according to the World Data Atlas. Although it is a natural byproduct of fossil fuel combustion, it can cause climate change by trapping heat and they also contribute to respiratory disease from smog and air pollution rise of Earth's temperature, severe changes in weather patterns, heavy rains and flooding at some parts, drought in others, major floods due to the melting of ice at the poles, food supply disruptions, and increase in epidemic diseases are the other effects of climate change caused by these greenhouse gases. Manikam and Morali Krishna 2017 asserts that combustion of fossil fuel contributes to the photochemical smogs so-called due to the role of sunlight in forming a cocktail of harmful chemicals from other gases. They form when nitrogen and hydrocarbon react in the atmosphere fueled by solar energy in the form of ultraviolet radiation. Next is carbon monoxide, which is a toxic gas. Carbon monoxide toxicity occurs after breathing in excessive levels of carbon monoxide. Hanley and Patel 2022 Describe it as a tasteless, odorless, and colorless gas, and victims are usually unconscious before they realize that they are being poisoned. Did you know that carbon monoxide poisoning affects 50,000 people a year in the United States? This is according to the study of Gladwin et al. 2017, in which the clinical presentation runs a spectrum ranging from headache and dizziness to coma and death. Lastly, Sulfur dioxide that causes acid rain. When these air pollutants react with water, oxygen, and other substances, it will form airborne sulfuric and nitric acid. Nunes 2019 of National Geographic describes acid rain as any form of precipitation that contains high levels of nitric and sulfuric acids. She also added that it can occur in the form of snow, fog, hail, or even dust that is acidic. Did you know that last year, on the 4th of July, PVOX observed an anomalously high sulfur dioxide emission from the volcano, citing it as the highest ever recorded from Taal.
PVOX said that the highest sulfur dioxide gas emission was recorded at an average of 22,628 tons per day, and it is still the highest as of April 9, 2022, after SO2 gas emissions increased in the first three weeks of March 2022 and peaked at 21,211 tons per day on March 16. Now, to deplete the use of fossil fuels and lessen the harmful pollutants associated with their combustion, there are essentially two methods that can be deployed. These are by the use of renewable energy sources such as solar, wind, hydroelectric, biomass, and geothermal. Second, implementing energy efficiency practices. Energy efficiency is to reduce energy use to the minimum level without reducing the standard of living, production quality, and profitability. In the Philippines, there is an implementation of Republic Act No. 11285 or the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act. This is the first legislation of its type in the Philippines that encourages energy efficiency and conservation measures and implements the long-awaited increase in energy efficiency. Also, remember that energy efficiency can only reduce fossil fuel use, but renewable energy can directly replace fossil fuel. For the second part of my report, we have the renewable energy sources. Main renewable energy sources include solar, wind, hydro, biomass, and geothermal. Also, energy sources from the ocean includes ocean thermal energy conversion or OTEC, wave, tidal. Before we proceed, let us define what is renewable energy source. Energy source is said to be renewable if it can be renewed or sustained without depletion and any side effect on the environment. It is also called alternative, sustainable, or green energy source. Fossil fuels, on the other hand, are not renewable since they are depleted by use and emit harmful pollutants and greenhouse gases. Now, let's continue to the solar energy. Solar energy is the best known renewable source. It is sufficient to meet the entire energy needs of the world, but it is not used as extensively as fossil fuels because of the low concentration of solar energy on Earth and its relatively high capital cost of harnessing it. Now, did you know that according to the Solar Plaza website, the biggest operational solar PV project as of 2018 in Southeast Asia is the 132.5 megawatts Cadiz Solar Power Plant located in the province of Negros Occidental in the Philippines. This is owned by Helios Solar Energy Corporation. Next is the wind energy. It is a conversion of kinetic energy of wind into electricity via wind turbines. It is one of the fastest growing renewable energy source. According to the Global Wind Energy Council, there were more than 341,000 wind turbines spinning and generating energy in 2016 all over the world. Did you know that the 150 megawatts Burgos Wind Farm in Ilocos Norte is the biggest wind farm in the Philippines? The wind farm generates approximately 370 gigawatts hour of electricity a year, which is used to power more than 2 million households. Next is the hydro or water energy. This is the collection of river water in large dams and then directing it into a hydraulic turbine to produce electricity. Did you know that as of 2019, the Philippines has 15 large dams in operation? Next is the geothermal energy. It refers to the heat of the earth and it is one of the most mature renewable energy technologies. Next is the biomass. It is an organic renewable energy source. It is becoming more popular because variety of sources such as agriculture, forest, residues, and crops can be used to produce biomass energy. Other renewables are reef and tidal energies. These are considered as part of ocean energy. They are mechanical forms of ocean energy that represent potential and kinetic energy of ocean water. Thermal energy of oceans. This energy can be utilized using OTEC system. 
This is the absorption of solar energy by ocean surfaces. Now, is the use of electric cars the ultimate solution to the air pollution problem? The answer is no. Why? Electric cars are often referred to as zero emission vehicles, but we have to note that the electricity used by electric cars is generated mostly by burning fossil fuels. To support this claim, Andre Goncalves asserted in his article that no, electric cars are not zero emission vehicles. Although they do not emit carbon dioxide while being driven, they might do it in three other stages. These are during manufacturing, energy production, and at the end of their life cycle. We can only claim electric cars as zero emission vehicles when the electricity they consume is generated by emission-free renewable energy sources. To conclude my part of our report, there are a lot of renewable energy sources that can be used to make electricity, and some can also make thermal energy that can be used for heating and cooling. Wind and water energy can only be transformed into electricity, but solar, biomass, and geothermal energy can be converted to both electricity and thermal energy. And that's all. The next reporter is Maren Cariaga. Hello. Good day, everyone. Thank you, Jaynard. Next topic to be reported will be about fossil fuels and nuclear energy. First, we have energy sources. As reported earlier, we have different energy sources, and these can be classified into renewable energy and non-renewable energy sources. Renewable energy sources was previously reported by Jaynard, which talks about different renewable energy sources such as biomass, solar, wave, water, geothermal, and wind energy. For the non-renewable energy sources, we have the natural gas, oil, nuclear, and coal. Natural gas, coal, and oil belong to what we call the fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are responsible for more than 90% of global combustion-related carbon dioxide emissions, and with that percentage, 45% is coal, 35% is oil, and 20% of which is natural gas. Coal is formed from plant remains that have been compacted, hardened, chemically altered, and metamorphosed by heat and pressure over geologic time. Coal can be found all over the world, mostly in places where prehistoric forests and marshes existed before being buried and compressed over millions of years. Coal is formed from ancient organisms such as plants, bacteria, and algae. Coal is made up mostly carbon. It also contains other elements such as hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and ash are the non-combustibles. The important characteristics of coal are energy content and sulfur content. Having a high energy content allows extraction of more heat from coal, making the fuel more valuable. Also, it is necessary to have low sulfur content to meet the emission limits as dictated by the governing regulations. Coal is mostly and is popularly used to provide electricity in steam power plants. Aside from this, Coal can also be used in steam generation, space heating, as well as in water heating. According to US EIA or the Energy Information Administration 2020, the United States has the largest recoverable coal reserves with an estimated 252 billion short tons of coal remaining. In the following slides, we will discuss to you the four common types of coal. The first type of coal is the bituminous coal. B 
bituminous coal is also called soft coal. It has high energy content and at the same time, high sulfur content. The higher heating value of bituminous coal is 28,400 kilojoules per kilogram. To define to you what is higher heating value, we have to define first what is heating value. Heating value is the value produced during the combustion of a specific amount of element or compound. And in this case, we have the coal, and it is given in the unit kilojoules per kilogram. On the other hand, higher heating value or HHV is determined by bringing all the products of combustion back to the original pre-combustion temperature while allowing any produced vapor to condense. Bituminous coal is primarily used in electricity generation in power plants. Next, bituminous coal assay. Assay is also known as the representative composition. And for this specific coal, the bituminous coal, 67% is carbon, moisture is 6.7%, sulfur 1.5%, nitrogen is 1.5%, Oxygen is 8.7%, hydrogen is 5%, and ash is 9.8%. The next type of coal we have the subbituminous coal. Subbituminous coal has lower energy content and lower sulfur content compared to bituminous coal. The higher heating value of this coal is 19,400 kilojoules per kilogram. And it is primarily used in electricity generation and heating applications. Next is a bituminous coal assay. As you can observe, the carbon content of this coal is lower than bituminous coal and the moisture content is higher than bituminous coal. It will be discussed in the following slides as to why. However, to give you a brief information about it, so bituminous coal is the transition stage of a bituminous coal from a lignite. The next coal to be discussed is the anthracite coal. Anthracite coal is also known as hard coal. It is uh, less common and only few plants, a few power plants burn it. The higher heating value is more than 26,000 kilojoules per kilogram. And this coal is usually used in residential and industrial heating. What is the assay of this anthracite coal? The carbon content of this coal is ranging from 80 to 95 percent. The sulfur and nitrogen content is low and the ash content of this a coal is from 10 percent to 20 percent. The moisture is 5 to 15 percent. Next we have the lignite. Lignite is also known as brown coal. Lignite is considered to be the coal with the lowest quality as it has low energy content and high sulfur and moisture fraction. The LHB or the lower heating value is less than 15,000 kilojoules per kilogram. LHB or the lower heating value can be computed by subtracting the heat of vaporization of water minus the higher heating value. This specific coal is uh, mostly used in electricity generation. Lignite assay. The carbon content of this coal is ranging from 25 to 35%. The ash content is composed of 20% and the moisture having 75%, which is the highest. The next slide will be the coal formation. From plant material, it will form into peat. Peat is the first stage in the formation of coal. 
It contains large amount of water and must be dried before use. Therefore, it is seldomly used as a source of heat. Peat burns with long flame and considerable smoke. Lignite is the second stage in the coal formation. It is formed when peat is subjected to increased vertical pressure from accumulating sediments. Lignite is dark brown in color and like peat, contains traces of plants. It is found in many places, but is uh, used only when more efficient fuel is not available. Next, we have bituminous coal. Bituminous coal is the third stage in the coal formation. Added pressure has made it compact and virtually all traces of plant life have disappeared. This soft coal is uh, our most abundant fuel. It is greatly used in industry as a source of heat energy. It is often classified as sabituminous or bituminous coal. The difference is that sabituminous is the transition stage from lignite to bituminous coal as mentioned earlier. Bituminous coal is widely used in the United States and across Europe. Anthracite is the fourth stage in coal formation, and as discussed earlier, it is also known as hard coal because it is hard and as observed in the most right picture has a high luster. In the next slide, we will discuss how are the elements of the coal burned and what are their end products. In the combustion of coal, hydrogen and sulfur are burned first, and car carbon is the last element burned. Consequently, nearly all sulfur burns into sulfur dioxide, and nearly all hydrogen burns into H2O. Meanwhile, the carbon is burned and forms either carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. Carbon monoxide can be formed when there is insufficient oxygen to burn by the time combustion is completed. However, it might also occur even in the presence of stoichiometric or excess of oxygen, and it will be due to incomplete mixing and short time for the combustion process. Combustion of coal produces pollutant emissions of unburned carbon particles carbon monoxide, unburned hydrocarbons, sulfur dioxide, ash, and nitrogen and oxygen compounds. The effects of these pollutant emissions in our environment are already, are already discussed in the previous presentation. However, to give emphasis for this, for these effects, we have the next slide. As we all know, sulfur dioxide is not only harmful to human health, but it is also harmful to the environment as it is one of the contributing factors of acid rain. Meanwhile, carbon monoxide is a greenhouse gas that causes photochemical smog and carbon dioxide, which produces 20% of the Earth's greenhouse effects causes global warming. Nitrogen and oxygen compound causes nutrient pollution on coastal waters. These are just some of the effects of the different pollutants created during the combustion of coal. Because of this, coal is considered to be the most polluting fossil fuel and the largest global carbon dioxide emission contributor around the world with about 40%. In the given problem, we are assigned to solve the higher heating value and the lower heating value for a coal with a given assay. With a given assay, 67.4% carbon, 5.31% hydrogen, 15.11% oxygen, 1.44% nitrogen, 
2.36% sulfur, and 8.38% ash or the non-combustibles. Given that the higher or the heating value of carbon is 32,800 kilojoules per kilogram, the sulfur having 9,160 kilojoules per kilogram, and for hydrogen, the higher heating value is 141,800 kilojoules per kilogram, and the lower heating value is 120,000 kilojoules per kilogram. LHV, or the lower heating value, and HHV, the higher heating value, are computed by getting the product of each combustible element's mass fraction, MF, and HHV or LHV, depending on what is asked, and then summing them up. For example, as seen in the solution for the given problem, to get the HHV, the mass fraction of each combustible element is multiplied by its respective HHV, and then these products are added, are added together to get the total HHV for the given coal assay. And so, by doing this formula, we can get the total HHV for this given assay as 29,850 kilojoules per kilogram. Meanwhile, to get the LHV, same process is done except that instead of multiplying the mass fraction by its HHV, it will be varied to LHV. Therefore, to get the total LHV, multiply each element's mass fraction to its LHV and then get its total. Also, it can be noticed that the LHV and HHV of carbon as well as the sulfur are the same. The reason for that is if the combustion of a fuel does not produce water in the combustion of gases, then the HHV and LHV will be the same. Since the combustion of hydrogen is the only combustible element in this assay to produce water, then it is the only element that has its HHV and LHV for it. The next topic or the next fossil fuel to be discussed is the oil. Oil, crude oil, or petroleum, as mentioned in the preceding slides, is a fossil fuel. Like coal and natural gas, petroleum was formed from the remains of ancient marine organisms such as plants, algae, and bacteria. Over millions of years of intense heat and pressure, these organic uh, remains transform into carbon-rich substances we rely on as raw materials for fuel and a wide variety of products. Oil is a mixture of a large number of hydrocarbons with different compositions which will be presented or shown in the next slide. This is the usual composition of oil. It is mainly composed of the hydrocarbon or the carbon and hydrogen and the rest are the sulfur, nitrogen, oxygen, ash and moisture. The following are the byproducts of oil refinery plants. We have gasoline, natural gas, heavy diesel fuel, light diesel fuel, jet fuel, LPG or the liquefied petroleum gas. As we all know, gasoline and light diesel fuels are used to operate automobiles. Also, since diesel fuel contains some sulfur, United States and European Union regulations limited the sulfur content this fuel from 300 parts per million to 10 parts per million. Oils are not usually used for electricity generation compared to coal and gas. However, oils can still be used in power plants and industrial heating applications. And as seen on this slide, there are two oil groups that are used in these industries. We have distillate oils and residual oils. Distillate oils are higher quality oils as it is highly refined. They contain less sulfur compared to residual oils. 
the higher heating value of distillate oil is 45,200 kilojoules per kilogram. It is used in internal combustion vehicles with either mechanical transmissions or electric transmissions. They are also used in automobiles, locomotives, and agricultural machinery, as well as the space heaters and power generators. Distillate oils assay. The typical composition of distillate oil is 87.2% carbon, 12.5% hydrogen, and 0.3% sulfur. The next type of oil is the residual oil. This oil is less refined and is thicker compared to distilled oil as it, contain, as it contains higher molecular mass, higher level of impurities, and higher sulfur content. The higher heating value of this oil is 42,500 kilojoules per kilogram. It is used as a fuel in simple furnaces such as power plants and industrial boilers. Next, we have residual oils assay. The composition of residual oil is 85.6% carbon, 9.7% hydrogen, 2.3% sulfur, 1.2% nitrogen, 0.8% oxygen, 0.1% ash, and 0.3% moisture. The next reporter is Alexis Mangabat. Thank you, Marian. Next topic to be discussed is about natural gas, nuclear energy, and electricity. Natural gas provides 29% of our energy and is used to heat about half of the homes in the United States. It is also a raw material in a variety of common products such as paints, fertilizers, plastics, medicines, and antifreeze. Natural gas accounts for 33% of electric power sector. It uses natural gas to generate electricity and produce useful thermal output, lastly, for their primary energy consumption. In the industrial sector, natural gas accounts for 40% of the consumption. Natural gas is used as a fuel for process heating in combined heat and power systems, as a raw material to produce chemicals, fertilizer, hydrogen, and as least and plant fuel. The natural gas industry in the Philippines was started by the Malampaya Deep Water Gas to Power Project located at the Northwest Palawan. It began its commercial operation in January 2002 and powered up to 20% electricity supply. With proven natural gas reserves of about 2.7 trillion cubic feet, the Malampaya gas field was scheduled to produce 146 billion cubic feet of natural gas per year. Natural gas will play a vital role in the country's energy mix and in the government's goal to achieve energy independence. According to the Department of Energy, natural gas accounts for 21.9% of the country's power generation mix in 2019. The Philippines is facing a mounting energy crisis as the Malampaya gas fields deplete and supplying 30% of Luzon energy consumption are expected to be depleted by 2024. Natural gas reserves in the Philippines. As of 2017, the Philippines hold 3.48 trillion cubic feet of proven gas reserves and it accounts for about 0.05% of the world's total natural gas reserves. Next, the Philippines consumes 110,960 million cubic feet of natural gas per year, and also accounts for about 0.1% of the world's total consumption. Lastly, the Philippines produces 108,770.20 million cubic feet of natural gas per year. As of 2015, the Philippines does not import nor exports any natural gas. Natural gas is mostly methane, 
where its percentage varies between 60 and 98 percent. It is mostly transported in a gas phase by pipelines in and between cities and countries. The heating value of natural gas depends mainly on the fraction of methane. The higher is the methane fraction, the higher is the heating value. As you can see, sulfur has the lowest heating value and natural gas goes second with 55.53 megajoules per kilogram. The tremendous amount of energy associated with the strong bonds within the nucleus of the atom is called nuclear energy. Nuclear fusion, the energetic splitting of large atoms such as uranium or plutonium into two smaller atoms. Next is the fusion, the combining of the two small atoms such as hydrogen or helium to produce heavier atoms and energy. A nuclear fusion reaction releases several million times more energy than a chemical reaction. However, a fusion reactions are much more difficult to achieve in practice because of the strong repulsion between the positively charged nuclei called Coulomb repulsion. In the nuclear energy timeline, in the year 1942, the first nuclear chain reaction was achieved by Enrico Fermi. In 1944, the first large-scale nuclear reactors were built for the purpose of producing material for nuclear weapons. In the 1986, the explosion at Chernobyl power complex results in the worst nuclear power plant accident. Lastly, in the year 2011, earthquake and tsunami destroys the nuclear power plant in Fukushima, Japan, creating a large meltdown. Nuclear power plant plays a significant contribution to achieving sustainable energy goals and enhancing energy security. The country's power supply reached a total of 25,532 megawatts of installed capacity in 2019, of which fossil fuels accounted for 60% and coal for 35% has increased its share of the total power generation to cover for the reduced hydropower output. For the nuclear development in the Philippines, the ideas of pursuing nuclear energy for power generation is not new for the Philippines. Completed in 1984, the 623-megawatt-bataan nuclear power plant located in Luzon was mothballed in 1986 due to post-Chernobyl political and safety issues emanated during the change of government administrations. The plans to reopen the plant has been raised multiple times, such as during the power crisis in the 90s and the skyrocketing of oil prices in 2007. Electricity was known to have reached the country in the Philippines in 1890. Meralco is the largest private sector electric distribution utility companies in the Philippines covering 36 cities, 75 municipalities, including the Metro Manila. It serves 6.5 million customers that includes the core of the country's industrial, commercial, and population centers. Electricity is the most valuable form of energy. Fuels cannot directly replace it because the vast majority of devices, equipment, and appliances operate on electricity. Electricity is produced in power plants by burning coal, oil, natural gas, and in nuclear power stations. Electricity is also produced by renewable energy sources such as solar power, where solar technologies convert sunlight into electrical energy either through photovoltaic panels or through mirrors that concentrate solar radiation. Wind turbines convert the energy in wind to electricity by rotating propeller-like braids around a rotor. Geothermal power plants use hydrothermal resources that have both water and heat. Hydroelectric power is a renewable source of energy that generates power by using a dam or diversion structure to alter the natural flow 
of a river or other body of water. According to European Commission, a smart grid is an electricity network allowing devices to communicate between suppliers to consumers, allowing them to manage demand, protect the distribution network, save energy, and also reduce the costs. It is a two-way communication between the utility and the electricity consumer. The smart grid is capable to monitor activities of the grid connected system, consumer preference of using electricity, and provides real-time information of all the events. The key components of smart grid include smart appliances, smart substations, smart meters, and advanced synchro phasor technologies. Thank you everyone. To end our report, we as future electronics engineers are standing firmly in the fight for our environment, our future, and the next generations. Our earth is fantastic. We can also be fantastic by saving the earth now. We are in charge of this and we can still do more by supporting I am fantastic. Hashtag let the earth breathe. Hashtag planet earth first. Hashtag climate change is real. Hashtag climate action 